What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ian from thelitunderground.com here today to talk about some very somber news that one of my favorite writers of all time, poets, thinkers, translators, Robert Bly died yesterday at the age of 94 on November 21st, 2021. And before I get into my thoughts and commemorating him, I would just like to say that we have to continue Robert Bly's legacy that watching the news coverage about his death today from NPR and the New York times and all the other big organizations has been laughable, man, because if Robert Bly had not been suffering from degenerative brain disease and kept writing and speaking over the last 15 years, he would have been canceled so hard. He would have been dragged through the mud and named called every single name in the book. Uh, People would have to make apologies for ever supporting him and make disavowments the whole routine because his opinions now with are shredded if you hold many of robert's most dear ideas and say them today you could have your youtube channel removed you would not be able to find a university position at anywhere except your local community college teaching english 101 and it's unfortunate and i would just like to say once again that it is up to us to continue on this legacy that we can't be scared that we have to continue on this energy that has been that robert bly started back i was reading A couple months ago, his book, Talking All Morning, which had, you know, some, which was like a book of interviews about Robert Bly. And he was railing in the 60s and 70s diversity quotas in literature, MFA programs, um, not everyone being nice and fluffy about people's writing. And that's all writing has become now. That's all journals are. That's all the university system has become. That's basically what we have now. And now, we're not even going to talk about the obliteration of masculinity and femininity. I can't, e- no offense to Robert, but I don't think he could even imagine where this went and how bad it could get and where we are now. And yeah, everybody, that's just my little quick aside that, you know, as soon as everyone, like I said, in these papers was dick writing, but would have not been if he actually would have had the voice because they can say, Oh, that was back in the nineties, the iron John sibling society. That was back in the early, you know, nineties and early two thousands. Like we're good, man. Like that was just a phase. And I think Robert would also be very angry at where the men's movement has gone also and the toxic nature of it and what, you know, what it has become on Reddit and all these other places. I think that he would be very upset also at at that i mean he did have an integral part but he came from a from a place of poetry and union archetypes and music and all these different things and now it has turned into insta land and weird stuff and uh, de- actually detaching from those things and attaching to this weird sense of um security and you guys know you guys know what i'm talking about though so yeah, so, you know, I don't want to turn this, you know, this is very sad. And I've actually been checking every couple months. I will look up Robert Bly's name just to make sure that, you know, just to see if he had passed passed away because, you know, of COVID and everything. But first of all, we have to talk about his poetry that a lot of people don't understand Robert's poetry and, and don't really get into it. Of course, Silence in the Snowy Fields is one of the greatest examples of the westernization, if that's even a word, um, a western example of Chinese poetry. I don't think anybody could get that hollowness, that emptiness, that certain darkness, that that tension in the shoulders that you get, and also that liberating feeling. That doesn't exist anymore. Like I was, like a couple months ago, I was reading some a Tracy K. Smith book, and you know she was a Nobel, I mean, excuse me, the poet laureate of the United States, and I was reading some of her nature nature poems and. You know, Robert Bly makes her look terrible. And interestingly enough, she was in the Robert Bly documentary. And, you know, it, that just shows the amount of talent that he had, that on an objective aesthetic level, level that 99 out of 100 people would say that, like, whoa, this, these poems are really good. But people, if we're just, if I'm just doing, like, nerding out about his, because I've read every single book that Robert Bly has been a part of or has put out, translated you know, people started falling off, you know, um, with sleepers joining hands and the light around the body. A lot of people couldn't and still can't follow that. They don't understand that energy. Like, 
that was brought to the table. And then after that, they kind of could. That that got followed a little bit. Of course, won the National Book Award for Poetry. But then after that, that's where a lot of people fell off. And people didn't like that Robert had gotten more into sound, into language, and into certain types of poems and off the Chinese topic. And I've heard a lot of criticism and a lot of people saying he should have stopped there or released less poetry. And I, 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 I can see a, a, a big evolution throughout his whole career, even till the last books about his poetry and even more so about his just improvement in not being put into a box, not being missed. And that's what people want. Like people want their favorite artist to keep sounding like the first album they heard over and over. But Robert never did that. And for sure, he never did that with his criticism that there are hundreds of essays about many different writers and poets and even philosophers, fiction authors by Robert Bly that detail so many different things and so many different movements and trends that are exceptional that I don't think anyone else that could never be published, that would never be published today. One, because they're not academic enough. And two, they're sometimes at times polemic and aren't scared to be polemic. So many great things are available. And, you know, I have some more photos here. And, you know, just overall, like, I know it's been a little bit somber, so I've been trying to t talk about, oh, but, you know, the energy that Robert Bly brings to so many different events and that that has shown me, like, right now, like, you know, you, like, oh, like his hand movements, man, like, it's great. And, like, we could talk about his criticisms, but, like, just the way he reads poems, go watch any, there's a lot of readings online, there's a lot of things I would recommend checking out his documentary. There's so many different, you know, videos out there of him speaking, man. And that's the type of energy we need to bring. That's the type of energy we need to bring to every single presentation. And that's something I'm very grateful for because it changed my perception of speaking. Because I heard, don't speak with your hand. Don't pause. Don't repeat. Ah, yes, we do. Ah, and the whales come again. And the whales come again. Ah. You know, stuff like that. That's what we need, everybody. That's that, you know, that really masculine meets feminine energy that is so beautiful. And on this channel, I am going to continue the legacy. I'm going to try to take it to the next level. I'm going to try to study, praise, and stand upon the shoulders of Robert Bly and keep it going. And, you know, I'm just going to say that I've been scared to really create a men's book club because that... um you know, because my life has been changed by like men's only stuff. Like I was a part of a, a a boys book club in middle school. And that that's the only reason I'm talking now that changed my life. I was a part of a basically all male martial arts school for years. Like occasionally there was a woman, but it was basically by just who would just by how it happened, just almost all men. And like that really gave me a lot of power and strength and like showed me a different side of masculinity because it wasn't, it wasn't toxic. It was very everyone was very, you know, there are, I was training with dudes that are, you know, are now in the, in the UFC and everyone was very kind and very nice. And there was a purpose and even a spiritual purpose. And yeah. So I think that his speaking stands for, you know, speaks for, speaks for itself. His criticism is great. I would recommend looking for dragon smoke before anything. If you're looking for criticism, I would recommend his first three poetry books, most of all, even though I just said like all of them are great, all of them are great, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I the language in, um, what is it? Let me look real fast. I think, I think the sleeper, sleepers joining hands, the one about his life and then the Vietnam poems and then his autobiographical uh, biographical poem, sleepers joining hands. If I have that correctly, what he was doing there with the, that poetry is very leaping, very nonlinear and very beautiful. And it's not been really attempted that much again. I, I can't, Especially there, like I said, there there is a certain Chinese element that has been repeated by some people, but especially in the nature poet world. But 
in terms of being able to leap with nature and with art types and with all these different things, I would say that the sleep sleepers join hands. If I'm correct, it might be the light around the body. I'm blanking right now. The book that won the national book award was insane. And it, I would recommend it. And then of course we need to talk about iron John. So then near the end of his career, writing career and yeah, in the last 20 years, he's Robert started to write more technical books. He's first talked about news of the universe and about the break of nature and the natural world and poetry. And then of course, iron John and a lot of people know Robert because of iron John. And I think that really limits people. And I, I wish, I know I'm very happy that they found him through that, but there are so much, there's so much more, even like the sibling society, I think is even just as good, if not a better book than iron John, but just didn't, you know, get that pizzazz and attention that, um, Iron John got, but Iron John also was a very, had a huge impact on my life. And I know hundreds of thousands of other guys that really gave us hope. It gave us a sense of purpose. It helped us identify our our own identity and move toward that. And a lot of people don't understand that. And, you know, it's hard to say, but like men, it's hard for men to understand women. It's hard for women to understand men. And there's a lot of anger around that. There's a lot of in the men's movement and stuff. There's a lot of, well, why can't women be like, there's a lot of resentment and anger. And when it's done in the correct way, it is a very beautiful experience just as, you know, women's only groups are, are very great for women, but yeah, we can't be scared. Everybody, we can't be scared of the, you know, who community, and what they're going to say, because I know that none of us are not supportive of other types of um, people, you know? So, yeah, everybody. Um, and then, of course, Robert Bly's translations, everybody, that um, bringing Pablo Neruda and Rolf Jacobson and, uh, Rolf Jacobson and Olav Hogg, Hog, um, O. L-A-V-H-A-G-U-E. Uh, check out his book, Luminous Dreams, which details, uh, it's half journals, half of his poetry and details his life. And he was in and out of insane assignments. But part some of the funny stuff, he has some uh, journal entries about Robert Bly coming to visit him. And Robert Bly translated a ton of his poems. And so many contributions, man. Um, Rilke's poetry, Kabir's poetry, um, Rumi's poetry. Like a lot of Robert's translations aren't the, canon or like approved or main translations anymore but he was translating back in the day everybody in his magazines like all these different people were getting translated and like i said it's not like the stephen mitchell translation i think for rilke or or whoever but overall there was a huge he had the eye for great poetry he knew what great poetry was he wrote great poetry and we have lost that, everybody. It is not getting published. Everything that he forewarned is happening. And there really is no turning back unless we really take a hard look at thinkers like Robert Bly. And that's what I'm hoping to do with a lot of my courses. And um, let me know about your thoughts about this, about the coverage, um, how you're feeling, if how he's changed your life. Um, yeah, I'm just making a video just to spread energy. If you don't know anything about Robert Bly, go check out Iron John, Silence in the Snowy Fields, Looking for Dragon Smoke, some of his, maybe his Kabir translation. That would probably be my first recommendations and for all the categories. Um, he has a good book about fairy tales with Marie, um, whatever her name, Marie Louise von Franz or whatever her name is. But yeah, everybody, thank you guys for being here. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want to tune in for the Robert Bly course. I was going to launch that in 2021. I don't know if that's going to happen anymore. Maybe it will. But yeah, thank you guys for being here. And, you know, just very sad news. And, you know, I don't feel... I knew I wasn't going to feel, like, really that sad. I do feel really sad. I don't know how I'm taking it yet. But um, it's just sad, you know, because he's, like, not, like, hasn't been that active. I've kind of been expecting it, but at the same time, it's like just knowing that his soul isn't here is it's, it's hard. You know, it's hard to know that like we have to move on this journey without Robert that we have to, you know, even in what, even if he isn't there, it's like, you know, because he has a degenerative brain disease, like 
maybe mentally it it was nice to know that he was there in spirit still that like the old guard still survived that like people who met i think he like has a story about meeting like t.s Eliot and shit and it's like whoa like you know people that knew those people people that knew william carlos williams people that like had met him or like i can't remember the guy that wrote the roman catholic guy i can't remember his name right uh, tom tom um lowell tom what was his name thomas lowell or yeah i mean people that knew him like people that knew i mean he knew everybody gary snyder um james wright um I'm trying to remember everybody else right now but i mean just the whole community that he was a part of was insane and he knew all these people and a lot of these people are dying now I, donald hall donald hall just died uh rest in peace donald hall like this whole group of of poets are now basically gone. I mean, because Robert met James Wright and all those guys when they were 18. And yeah, man, it's it's a sad day. And I would just, once again, question what happened to everybody. All these people that were a part of the movement and or like later on got into Robert Bly. They're now the cancelers. They're now all the people who aren't speaking up. Maybe they are or they're not doing anything. They they aren't standing for or against what's ha been happening to the literature community. And um, I don't think that Robert would have sat on the sidelines. I think that he would have, if he was younger too, like if Robert was, you know, whatever reason was 60 right now, you know how much energy he'd be bringing to what is happening. You know how much he, like I said, he would be public enemy number one if he was 60 years old right now. He'd be going on speaking tours and trolling and bringing out certain poets and talking about certain things and holding huge men rallies. And, and it wouldn't be toxic, though. It wouldn't be like incel land, man. It would actually be the people that cared. And I remember I read an article... a while back about some guy that, you know, a trans female now who went to a men's movement conference. And he said that like, he was basically writing a, a, a thing bashing it, but said like, at the time it's what I needed. But looking back, it was very toxic. And it was like, mm, all right. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Um, go read some poems. Like I said, go read silence in the snowy fields. And yeah, 